you know, I, I'm sure you, you know most of this, but maybe there's a couple hands that are, um, you know, are, are easy to forget. Um, I, I'm sure, like I said, you, you know most of these plays, but we'll talk through some of the hands that may present, you know, to question why and, and talk through them. Uh, you know, I, this is the dealer's hand. You, you only see, obviously, the one card. And this is a player saying, anytime you have a 17 or above, you're pretty much always going to stand, okay? Uh, you know, we get into some soft 17 and some soft total 7, which we'll talk about. But 17 or, 17 or above, no matter pretty much what the dealer has up, uh, you're going to stand. Now, the, the way to, to, to learn this is, is, is it's a process. The first thing you want to do is you definitely want to sit down with cards and look at them. And then print any basic strategy chart off uh, that you can get. I mean, they're all over the internet. They're all over the place. Uh, you know, and I'm just going to talk right now about the single deck games. Uh, there are some tweaks we'll do for multiple deck games when we're playing basic strategy. But for now, we're just talking about single, single deck uh, basic strategy chart. You know, there's a, a couple more doubles and things like that in it. But in any event... Um, you know, 17 and above, you stand, okay, against a 10, okay? Same thing, seven, 17 and above against an ace or pretty much anything, the, the 10 ops. You, you pretty much always stand with 17 or above, okay? Okay, now let, let's take a look at some of the uh, stiff hands. Uh, let's start with 12. So if you have a hard 12, okay, let's give you a hard 12 here. Okay, and let's say the dealer has a two up. This may be something, you know, in, in this situation, basic strategy calls for a hit. A lot of people stand on it. Uh, when you play clump style, sometimes it calls for a stand, but, but strict basic strategy uh, without counting is, is definitely a hit, okay? Same, same also with your 12 against a three, and you'll see people argue with, with you about this at the casino. Uh, 12 against a 3, it's a hit. I mean, more cards, you're not, your chances of busting are, are slim. Uh, well, not necessarily slim. I mean, there's there's four 10 cards that'll take you over the top, you know. Uh, 10, uh, Jack, Queen, King, which are all 10 value cards. Anything else, some may improve your hand and get you in a better position, or some just may get you closer to break, and at which point you're going to stand. So this is the one where a lot of folks uh, kind of miss. You're going to go ahead and, and, and stand, or hit, I'm sorry, uh, your 12 against a 2 up or a 3 up. Okay. Against a 4 up, let's talk about that. You're going to stand. You're going to stand against a 4. You're going to stand against a 5. And you're also going to stand against a 6, obviously. And hope that the dealer breaks. And by the way, that's the only way you can win. When the dealer has less than 17, in case you didn't figure that out yet, the only way you can win is if the dealer breaks. Okay. So there's that. Okay. Again, anything above that, if the dealer has any high, any potentially pad hand against any stiff, okay, whether it's 12, 13, 14, 15, or 16 that you have, Okay, you're going to hit. So if you're in this situation, 12 against a seven, it's a potentially pat hand. It, it doesn't assume that there's a 10 in a hole, okay? But it plays it like there's a 10 in a hole. So that may be an easy way to remember it, but I think, it, I think it's pretty common. You know, when do you hit? Anytime the dealer has a potential pat hand against, against a stiff hand. So if any, any one of these cards were your cards, you would hit this, three, 14, right, 15, or 16. These all result in hits trying to improve your hand. No matter what the dealer's up card is, anything that's a potentially pad hand, eight, of course, 10, nine, I'm sorry, 10, or ace. And I think it's important to see the cards and look at them. Now, you know, as I said, when you, when, you know, the, the only place you're going to uh, run into any ambiguity and it's real easy to take care of right now is in fact, is when the dealer has a two up. Okay. When they have a two up and you have a, a 12 against 12 against a two is a hit. Okay. Again, the only one you may forget 12 against a potential three is also a hit. 
So that pretty much takes care of quite a few hands, okay? Everything else you stand, anything where the dealer has a, a potential pad hander up, you're gonna go ahead and, uh, and hit it. Uh, if you have 17 or above, you're gonna go ahead and stand, obviously against any dealer card. Okay, so that's that. Okay, so let's talk about some other hands now. Now, and, and again, you can deal yourself hands. Uh, I always thought the best way to practice is to simply go to the casino, you know, get yourself a little beat, uh, uh, strategy card, sit there and watch the hands. How would you play it? How would you play it? it you know, in less than 24 hours, you, you pretty much have every play um, mastered. Okay, so let, let's talk about now um, some hands below um, uh, 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 that can't be busted on, uh, on two cards. Let, let's talk about 11, okay? And of course, we all like to see an 11. Will give us a six and a five, and of course, with with this, it's critical that you you have the option to go ahead and double your hands in this case. Okay, so when when do you double? Okay, in a single deck, uh, with with rare exceptions, you're going to double everything all the time. And, and remember, sometimes you can double for less. The only thing is, you don't want to double. There's only one exception when you don't double, and you don't want to double against an ace. Okay, in this situation, you know, you just go ahead and hit your hand, okay? And then play it according to whatever you get. If you get a, anything over 17, you're going to stand. If you get anything less than that, then, of course, you got the option to re-hit. When you double, you, you forfeit your option to re-hit, obviously. So, so pretty easy to remember 11. Double against everything except an ace, okay? If you hit it against the ace, as you should, and you get maybe a 3 or a 2, okay? Obviously, just play it according to the chart again. Go ahead and re-hit it, and hopefully you'll improve the hand. Okay, pretty easy. Okay, not too bad. Okay, against a dealer 10, what are we doubling? Okay. Well, we're gonna go, it, actually, it's, 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 it's the same. You always double the 11. What I meant to say is, if we have a 10, forgive me. Let's get a five out there pair of nickels. See if I can find another five. Okay, so if we have a 10, when are we going to double? Okay, with single deck, the only two times that you're not going to double is against a 10 or against the ace. Obviously, just hit, and depending upon what card you get, make your decision from there. If it's still a hand less than 17, for instance, if you hit it with this and it's an ace, you're going to go ahead and hit again and hopefully you'll improve the hand, okay? Same thing with the 10. Do not double against a 10, 10 against a 10. Do not double, needless to say don't split them, okay? Everything else, the dealer has any other card up, go ahead, this would be a double. Okay, get the idea? Okay, great. Not too bad. Nine, nine can be one that, that uh, it's easy to forget. Sometimes uh, a lot of people uh, miss a couple of them. Um, it's it's a little bit more aggressive playing a nine uh, with with respect to doubling in single deck than it is in multiple deck. They don't double as much in, in multiple deck games with nine. But you just got to remember always double a nine when it's three through six. Um, you know how do you remember that nine is divisible by three? Uh, might be a way to do it and then double that. Uh, so three through six, you just have to memorize it. Any other time, you're simply going to hit, of course. Three through six, so obviously this would be a double. That would not be a double. You don't want to double it against a two. There's too many options for the uh, dealer not to break, okay? So that's one of the exceptions with nine, is do not double a nine against a two. Let's go ahead and look at all the other options. Do not double against a 10. Double against a three. Obviously, double against a six. Do not double against a deuce. Double against a four. Do not double against a nine. Okay, against an eight, just hit. Against a seven, just hit. Against a five, go ahead and double. Against an ace, do not double, just hit. And of course, against a 10, okay? So with nine in single deck, again, do not double against a deuce. 
okay? Or anything seven or greater, okay? No doubles, okay. There we have that. Okay, let's, okay, five through eight, obviously uh, you're, you're always just going to hit it. Anytime you have a five through an eight, um, uh, uh, er, total, uh, whether it be a soft five or a soft eight or a hard eight. Uh, it's not really a hard eight. A two card eight, I guess I should say. Uh, all the time, no matter what the dealer has up in single deck, you're, you're just going to go ahead and hit. Okay, you don't want to be doubling a total of eight. Okay, why? Because the average dealer hand, they say, is probably about 19, 19.2, I think they say, in multiple deck. So, you know, if you get a 10, you know, that's only 18, you're not even going to beat the average dealer hand. Okay, so anything 5 through 8, just hit it. Okay, okay, so that pretty much takes care of the first half of the chart. The exceptions, okay, let's review them. If the dealer, dealer has a 2 up, okay, and you have a hard 12, that's a hit. Uh, you have an 11, double everything except against an ace. I think it's important to, to see them. You're gonna double everything except if the dealer has an ace, okay? 10, sometimes people remember it as when you have a 10, double everything two through nine, okay? So two through nine and then 10, okay? So let me get a 10 up here. There's your 10, double everything two through nine. Do not double against an ace. Do not double against a 10, but double anything two through nine. All these up cards would be a double with a 10. Okay, nine. When you have a nine, remember what it is? Anybody? Devised, remember the divisor three? It's always three through six. You're gonna double your nine when you have a three through six. Okay, this would be a double. That is not a double. That is not a double. That is a double. That is a double. That is not a double, obviously. That is not a double, okay. Five through eight, hit your hand. Okay. Okay, so now let's talk, let's talk about um, our soft totals. Um, ace, let, you know, let, let's start with uh, ace two, I guess, first. Um, you have a deuce and you also have an ace, which is the, what, you know, what we say it's a soft 13, it, it can't be busted. Uh, it can't be busted uh, with one card hit. Okay, so let let's start against uh, let's start against low cards. I guess is probably the best thing because um, sometimes it, they can be ambiguous. And the only thing you're, you're obviously always going to hit them. Uh, you, the only thing to remember uh, when you have a soft total is you're always going to hit them. Okay, it's just which ones are you going to double them on? Okay. And with an ace two, just remember you're only going to double it on two situations, which are the two. You want to double it against the cards that the dealer is most likely to break with, okay? And of course, that's a five or six. So against a dealer two, you simply hit and then play your hand accordingly. You may end up with another soft total. If you get a two, you have a soft 15, okay? So we'll, we'll talk about this. Of course, there's no other option then except to hit. You can't double after three cards. So you, you may hit it once or you may hit it twice, okay? Okay. Um, you're going to go ahead and you're going to continue to hit it, okay, until you get to a certain point, which when the total reaches ace eight. So in other words, if you hit it and get this, well, I mean, needless to say, you're not going to hit a 20 again, okay? Um, if you hit this, that's a 19, okay? That's pretty much a stand too. There is some ambiguity when you hit this hand. Um, if you happen to hit it with an ace eight, we'll talk about that depending on what the dealer's up card is, okay? Okay. Um, okay, so two, you're gonna hit it, okay? Three, you're gonna hit it, four, you're gonna hit it. You're gonna double it against the dealer five and against a dealer six. 
and hoping you'll get that eight there that I got, okay? Okay, same thing with ace three. Pretty much it played exactly the same way, which makes it a little bit easier. Soft 14, okay? Soft 14, you're gonna double against a five or six. The only two cards you're gonna double it against. Okay, that'd be a double. And that would be a double, otherwise hit, okay? Ace four, you're gonna, gonna double in three situations. So ace two and three, you double in two situations against the five and six. Ace four, you double against the four through six, okay? Ace four, four through six. So you're gonna double against a six, a five, and also the four. Okay, so you're gonna get one card, okay? Ace five, same situation, played exactly the same as an ace four. You're gonna double against a four, a five, or a dealer six. If I have it there, I'll put it there. I think it's important to, to actually see it. Okay, that's a double, okay. Now, sometimes we get into ones that are, are this one isn't too tricky, but let's talk about it, ace six, okay? So ace six is a soft 17. If you think about it, it, it makes this a little bit easier to play. Um, there's only one way you can win with ace six, okay, without hitting it, um, is, is, is if the dealer breaks, okay? So when do we double, when do we, when do we hit it, okay? Um, you're gonna go ahead and hit your ace six, remember, against a dealer 12, or potential, uh, potential 12 against a two up is actually what I should say. So this would be a hit. Okay. You're just gonna have to memorize that. Three through six, you're gonna double, okay? So your ace seven doubles against a three through a dealer six up. Any one of those hands or potential hands, you're gonna double that soft 17, okay? Against any other dealer up card, potentially pad, obviously, you're going to hit. You're just going to play it like it's a, a, a seven, okay? Okay, let's go ahead now and talk about the A7, which sometimes, I, I hate to say I see people playing it wrong because when I play blackjack, and, and as, this is especially true uh, when you play clump style, they say, well, you made the wrong play. Let me tell you something. If you changed basic strategy and you won, you made the right play. Okay? You, you won the money more so than, than what you should have. Okay. So A7. Okay. So that's it's an 18. Okay. So the computer says when you have A7, which is a soft 18, if the dealer has a 2, you remember what you do? You stand. Okay. Sometimes that can be a little confusing. Okay. A7 against a 2 like this, you're going to go ahead and stand. You're going to double against a three, a four, a five, or a six, okay? Those are your double hands against the dealer up card. Three, four, five, and six, okay? Against a dealer seven, You're gonna stand, okay? So it's playing it as if there were a ten in the in the in the. In the uh, that's an easy way to remember. It's not actually how it's calculated, but it, it's playing it as as it, as if the dealer is pat, okay? Same thing with an eight, and, and and quite honestly, in this case, you hope for a nine, I guess, okay? You're gonna stand, okay? So a seven, which is a soft eighteen against a seven or eight up potentially pat hands, you stand. Okay, now here's the one that everyone misses, or they, they don't necessarily, they don't uh, necessarily miss it, I guess. They, they just, you know, uh, make the mistake. Okay, the easy way to remember this, okay, is, is to play it as if the dealer has a 10 in a hole. Well, you can't break when you hit your soft 18. So you're, you're rooting for a deuce here or an ace or something. Against a nine, you're going to hit, okay? Because it, the average dealer hand is higher, and he, he's, he's halfway there, okay? Um, against your 10, 
that would be a hit. Hopefully you get that, huh? Okay. And of course against your ace, again, you're, you're going to hit it also. Okay, so, so sometimes a point of confusion is the is the ace seven. Or the yeah, the ace seven, soft eighteen. So against the nine, ten, or ace, those are the ones you want to hit. Okay? You want to stand against a seven and eight. You want to double three through six, and you want to stand with a, a dealer has a two up. Okay, so kind of kind of work with those a little bit. That that's one. Uh, you know, go to the casino, uh, watch the tables, look for that hand, and try to remember how to how to play it. Okay, okay, okay. Obviously, Ace Ten through uh, Ace Eight. I'm sorry, through through Ace Ten. Ace Ten is obviously a blackjack. You're going to stand pretty much in every situation. You have a 19 or a 19. Um, okay, okay. Let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at our, our splits. Um, uh, of course, you, you, you always know in, in single deck games, and, 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 and you got to watch. Well, we'll talk about it obviously more uh, in in uh, in multiple deck games. It, you know, the rule is always split aces and eights in a single deck game. If you happen to get into a single deck blackjack game, uh, there are some in Las Vegas, and you get a pair of eights, they're not going to flinch if you split your eights, okay? Uh, against pretty much anything, okay? Any up card, split them up. Hopefully, uh, you'll turn one of them into a 21. Uh, really, in a lot of cases, against a dealer 10 or something like that, you're, you're looking just, to, you know, I, I'm always happy with a push, okay? Same with aces. If you, if you have two aces, uh, two aces against any dealer up card, you know, go ahead and split them. Uh, in a multiple deck strategy with clump style strategy, sometimes we, we simply hit them. But when we're playing single deck, we're just going to go ahead and always split them up. So always split aces and eights, okay? Okay. Um, with 20, any combination of 20 obviously is two card 20. No reason to do anything with that, okay? Okay. Okay, so let's get into our, to our lower pairs now. Uh, sometimes uh, nines are hard to remember. What do you do with nines? Okay. Uh, you're gonna pretty much. There's only three circumstances when you when you uh, stand uh, with nines. Okay, and it's pretty easy to remember. Uh, if you have 18, so if the dealer has a seven up, not the drink, <laughs> a seven card up, uh, you're gonna go ahead and stand. Hopefully, it's again it's played as if the dealer has a ten in a hole. Uh, you know, I get criticized for saying that a lot, but it's 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 an easy way to remember it. Okay, so it's played as if the dealer has a ten in the hole. Uh, again, it's a stand. Also, too, uh, against a ten, you know, you, you're trying to get out of a bad situation there. You certainly can't hit it. You don't want to split it when the dealer has potentially a, a better hand. And the same against an ace is, is another stand. Okay. In every other situation, whatever the dealer has. Uh, um, you're going to go ahead and split your nines if he has an eight or any low card, obviously, even the deuce. You're going to go ahead. These are all splits. Just remember. So, so anytime uh, you have nines, you split nines against everything but a seven, ten, or ace. So split against a, 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 a four, five, six, two, three, four, five, or six. Okay. Okay. That's our nines. Okay, we always we talked about the uh, we talked about the the nines. We talked about the eights, pair of, uh, pair of sevens, which is a hard hard fourteen. There are some uh, cute plays with uh, there is one count play with a seven uh, when the dealer has uh, uh, when you have two sevens and a, and the dealer has a, a ten up, uh, which I'll tell you about later on sometimes. But anyway, it's not important now. I probably shouldn't have mentioned it. Uh, you're always going to split sevens. It's pretty easy to remember. You always split sevens when the dealer has any card two through seven up. So against anything else, um, you're going to go ahead and hit it. Okay, you're just going to play it um, pretty much like a 14, a hard 14, which is what it is. With the with the only exception is if the dealer does have a seven up, uh, you're going to go ahead rather than rather than hitting it, you're going to go ahead and, and split it. Uh, it's going to increase your chances. Uh, and probability to win the hand. Hopefully you get a nice push out. If I can find a seven, I'll throw one up here for you. Oh, there we go. 
So in this situation here, you want to split them up. Hopefully you get you know two fours and then two tens on them, okay, and you're able to double too. But against the seven, you're going to go ahead and split them. So split them anything two through seven. Obviously that's a split. Two through seven. And there's a six. Any one of these cards, okay, that would be a hit. Okay, that would be a hit. That's a hit. That's a hit. That's a hit, and that's a hit. Okay. Any low card, two through seven, that would be a split. Okay? Okay, great. Okay, dealer has, you have a pair of uh, sixes, and you go, oh my goodness. <laughs> well, it's not too bad. There, there are certain times uh, uh, you want to split them. Um, you know, some, some folks uh, play it as 12, you know. Uh, the best way to play it against a deuce, you know, I mean, I mean, there, I, I won't say there are times, uh, based on a count, I, I simply hit the 12, but uh, they do, it, it's better to split them if you're not counting uh, two through six, okay? Um, and then otherwise just play them as a hard 12. So if the dealer has a seven, you're just simply going to hit it, okay? If the dealer has anything low, you're gonna go ahead and split your sixes. And hopefully you're looking for a pat hand and he's gonna break. So that would be a split. You know, like I said, the one, the one that may be a little bit uh, confusing is a, a pair of sixes against 12 is a split, okay, rather than a hit. Okay. Fives, pair of fives, you're gonna, you're gonna play it as 10. Okay, pair of fives plays exactly the same as 10. Okay, most of the times you double, which is two through nine. Pair of fives, just simply play it as a 10. Never split fives, okay. Okay, let's take a look at a uh, pair of fours, which is eight. And, and really, you know, the, the only decision with fours is, is when are we gonna split them? Um, or are we just gonna play it as an eight? You're gonna, you're gonna only split your fours in two circumstances, against a five, okay, or against a six. Okay. That's the only time you're gonna split your fours. You can remember it this way, splitting fours is stupid. <laughs> okay. So against four, when you have eight with, with, that's made up of two fours, you only split it against really high probability of dealer break cards. And, and honestly, it's not that high. Okay. Okay. Let's take a look at a dealer, a pair of threes. Let me talk through them here. So you have six, obviously you can't break. Uh, when do you split threes? You're gonna split your threes two through seven, okay? Two through seven, you split anything else, just simply hit them, okay? So here would be a split, here's a split, here's a split, here's a split, and here's a split. Any other times? Hit them. The nice thing about twos and a pair, or I'm sorry, a pair of threes and a pair of twos is they play exactly the same with respect to splits. You split them two through six. Seven, I'm sorry, two through seven. That's a split. Of course, that's a split, it's the same card. That's a split. Okay, just, just to finish up with the twos there, I think I'm, uh, the camera went off there, I apologize. Um, Split twos, same as threes, two through seven. Seven up, this would be a split two situation. So what I wanted to do, and, and we're gonna cover a lot with blackjack, but you know, right now we're just going over the basics. And I, I kinda wanted to show you probably the nice way to learn how to count. And again, I want you to learn how to count first before you learn the basic strategy chart, because when you're practicing counting, you're actually learning the basic strategy. But uh, in any event, we'll get over all the tweaks. I mean, there are some tweaks on the chart for single deck blackjack that I didn't go over in the video, but are on the chart, which we'll talk about. Uh, has to do with doubling after splits and whatnot, but it's not important right now. The most important thing is that you have the whole basic concept, what you're trying to do, and you know, 95% of the plays, and that you're able to count cards pretty efficiently, okay? Now, there's a lot of ways to learn how to count cards. Uh, but to start off, you generally just have to grab some cards and do it really slow. Uh, the best place to learn how to count cards, once you get 
somewhat proficient at it, is to simply go to the casino and stand behind a blackjack table and count the deck down. Uh, what, it doesn't even matter if it's eight decks, six decks, one deck, or, or two decks. Okay? For now, we're concentrating on the strategy with one deck, Okay, because it's, it's a good place to start and you don't have to worry about calculating running count. The running count is the count per deck with one deck. Um, and anyway, it's easy to, to handle one deck. Okay, so how, how, do you, how, how do you, I thought I saw a king there. How do you, how do you, count, um, how do you count what's a good way to, actually, not, not so much how do you count, how do you practice to learn if you're just starting off. So that's what I want to concentrate on uh, on this little short clip here. Uh, about the, uh, the, since we got the basic strategy taken care of there and we went over all the plays, or the majority of the plays, there are more, and we'll tweak them as we, uh, as we get into different game situations and different rules and, and uh, the decks and whatnot. Okay, so the best way to do it when you're first starting out is to get one deck and just simply deal cards, okay? It's very easy to do. It uh, doesn't take a lot. you got to do it real slow at first. And what we're after is accuracy, okay? So you just deal a, a player's card and then deal a, a dealer's card and then you can deal one up, okay? And for me, I should have burned a card, but I didn't. Um, it, it, it really doesn't matter um, to start. I like grouping cards. In other words, I'll take this is a plus card and this is a minus one card. So together they make zero and this is a neutral card. So so we don't have anything to worry about it. The count is still zero. This is a 13 against a 10. So just and then play basic strategy. Okay. Hit it with a six. Okay. So now we're up to 19. Hold it just for a second. Hold the count where it's zero, you figure. And then the dealer has blackjack. Now this one cancels this one out. Okay. So we have low card, high card, low card, high card. So the count it's still zero at this point going into the next round, okay? <clears throat> There's a heartbreaker there, huh? 19, huh? Okay, so we're at zero. Again, just deal one hand to start. Okay, that's zero, okay? Now minus one. If you wanna, if you wanna do a running count, that's fine. Some, I like pairing them when you can, and then if you have a single card, just adjust the count. So we're at minus one. 12 would hit, okay, back to zero, okay, 16 would hit, minus one, right, zero, 21. So we're still at zero, the count is still at zero. Again, you can group, you can wait till the whole round is, 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 is dealt and then check yourself. Match, 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 zero, 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 neutral. Okay, and then you're gonna pick those up. Okay, so we're we're going into this round. The count per deck is still zero. Okay, hey, we got an ace. Whoop. Okay. So a pair of aces. We're we're probably gonna split them. Okay, we're at zero, but now we have three low cards, and at this point, you probably want to go ahead and count them all at once. So we're at minus three. So you know, a basic strategy player would split them. Minus three. Minus two, minus three, minus three, okay? And of course we pushed, okay? So now we're still at, we started the round at zero, one, two, three, four high cards, and one low card, now we're at minus three, okay? Now, once you get to that point, let's, let, let's do one more round here. We're, we're at minus three, okay, for our count. Let's do one more hand. All neutrals, okay. Minus three, minus two. Of course, 15 against the five is gonna stand, okay. So now we're at minus two, minus one, still minus one, zero. So the count is zero, okay. I want to get a, just a plus or minus count here. So we're still at zero. Let's do one more hand. Okay. Minus two. 17 would stand. Right? Plus one. Or minus two, I'm sorry. Uh, plus, a, plus a one, which is minus one. So we're at minus one. 
minus 2. Okay, so we figure we're at minus 2 now. That's a good break, huh? That's nice when that happens. We're at minus 2, so what does that mean? Okay, minus 2 means we're, we're short two tens. There's two more low cards in the remaining cards than there are high cards. So what I like to do is check ourselves, okay, to see if that's actually the case, okay? So if we take out all the high cards and all the low cards and separate them out, there's a neutral, there's a neutral, okay? There's a neutral, <clears throat> okay, seven and eight, okay? Okay, so here's our neutral cards, there's four of them, they don't count. Okay, I think we said we're at minus two. Okay, so let's see if, if we're counting it right. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight high cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten low cards. Minus two means we're short two tens. We have two more high cards, or low cards, I'm sorry, left in the deck. Of course, and the low cards help the dealer. So minus count is advantageous for the dealer. Okay, so you want to practice with one hand. Now, the other thing you want to do, which is kind of uh, a, be a benefit of, of dealing the cards yourself, is you want to learn how to shuffle, okay? Because uh, notice they shuffle on the table like, like that uh, when they do a short ripple. Because when we're doing multiple decks, we want to be able to simulate the shuffle and actually the card pickup procedure uh, of the casino. And we'll talk more about that in the club strategy, okay? But this is the, one of the advantages or benefits of actually dealing cards, okay? So now once you go through it, you know, dealing one hand at a time, very slow, maybe you want to go down uh, to the casino and, and see how it goes and count some there. The other thing to do, and I think it's a little bit easier, okay, and shuffle these up good, do them about seven times. Get a nice riffle there. Um, is to deal a couple more hands, and you might find it a little bit easier, okay, uh, to deal a couple more hands because you can group your cards. So you can do that. Now, okay, so the next thing to do is, is to go ahead and deal a couple hands, okay. Um, you know, you can burn a card if you want. That's the, that would be plus one, okay? If they'll show it to you. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. If you ask, they usually show it to you. So plus one, and then maybe deal three hands, okay? Now, again, when, when you're dealing multiple hands, and, and of course, if you play, you know, uh, in, a, in a multiple deck game, you can have six and sometimes even seven hands. So... I think it is easier to actually group cards, okay, or count them all together. Like, in other words, if you scan this, of course, this was our plus one, right? One, two, three, four, five. That's five and two, okay? So plus one plus five, okay, one, two, three, four, five. That's plus six minus two is plus four, okay? You can do it that way, or you can think this is zero, okay, and then go one for this one, two, three, four, whatever's easiest for you. For me, I like grouping them. This is zero, okay? So, so again, this is zero, zero, one, two, three, and then the burn card was plus one. So we're at plus four, okay? We're at plus four starting the round. And again, now you can practice your basic strategy. You're gonna play all these basic strategy, okay? Okay, so here's, here's a seven and a seven. That's 14, so we're gonna let that go against a 10. Okay, remember this one. This was one break. Okay, so plus four, now we're at plus three, and the dealer, what, they pick that up right away, so you do actually have to calculate that right away, okay? 16 against a two, plus three, we're gonna stand. Turn this over, plus three. Now we're at plus two with the ace taking the countdown. Okay, we have a soft 13. Okay, and the dealer hits to 19, okay? So we were at plus two, now with the six, we're back to plus three. Okay, so going into this round, we're at plus three. Now, since the count is is uh, is positive, the only thing I want you to do when you're first starting off, you know, is play maybe play some nickel blackjack and even lower stakes if they got it, and bet a little bit more when the count is plus and a little bit less when the count isn't. So if you're playing ten dollar blackjack, when the count's plus, bet ten dollars, and when you're when you when you have a, a minus count, uh, you know, bet bet one dollar or bet uh, five dollars. So. Okay, so we're at plus three. Let's let's deal one a couple more rounds. You know, may, maybe we're, we're going to go to a five table game. Okay, 
Okay. So here, here we go. We were at plus three. So, uh, you know, if you're sitting over here, you have time to think about things, okay? So, so if we group cards, okay, the only two that we actually have to worry about because there's so many neutral cards is this one and this one. So we're still at plus three with this whole round. So one glance at that, you just look, they're all neutral. Here's a low, here's a high, here's a low, here's a high. We're still at plus three. Okay, so everybody's probably going to play basic strategy. This, tell, this fellow would hit plus three, okay? He would hit, break, break, plus two, right? Dealer would pick that up. Now we're at plus two. 17, well, 17's gonna stand. 17's gonna stand. Nine's gonna hit, okay? At plus two, okay? Then he takes him up to 17, a neutral card. Still at plus two. The dealer turns their card, okay? Uh, brings it down to plus one. Okay, so that's the best way to play Pick the cards up as they do in the casino. Put them on your discard tray. Okay, so I think we said we're at plus one. Again, you want to check yourself. Okay, let's go ahead and check ourselves. Let's, let's take a look at the high cards, low cards, and neutral cards. And this is always good to do just to make sure, because you want to go for accuracy at first. You want to you make sure that you're counting accurate, that you're doing it, doing it correctly, and that everything is in order. Uh, because it doesn't do you any good to practice uh, if you're not doing it correctly, okay? So we said we're at plus one, okay? So if we're at plus one, there should be one more 10 uh, than low cards. So we're going to see. So we have here two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. Two, four, six, eight, ten. 12, okay? So our count's right. So that's that's the best way to practice. Again, once you get, you know, a little proficient at it, walk into the casino, stand behind stand behind the uh, the table and, and try to count the cards. And just keep a running count to start. You want to get in and play, keep a running count. Uh, even in a multiple deck game, play your basic strategy, play for low stakes. Go in and play $5 when the count's uh, you know, it, 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 in the negative range, zero or below, and 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 bet uh, two chips when it's in the positive or above. Okay, and 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 that's you kind of evolve into that. Now, we're talking basically about the single deck strategy here now. Okay, and there's some tweak plays uh, with some splits where you, you, you if you uh, if you can't double after you split, you simply want to hit it, but. Again, uh, you know, we can talk more about those in the forum. The next thing is what I'm going to teach you is we're going to get into the, the, uh, the tweaks on the single deck game and then go into the multiple deck games, okay? Tweaking that. And we're still, we're still going to do the traditional count strategy and playing basic strategy as we enhance and as we get better at it. You can see how you can evolve into this. And then I'm going to get you into uh, learning the casino shuffles, one or two of them. Now, you know, there's not much we can do with a shuffle machine right now. I mean, uh, we can't go out and buy one usually. Uh, but there are still some hand shuffle games, and we want to be able to simulate those. And those are the best games to play the clump style strategy. So we're going to get into how to identify that and kind of go from there. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I'm going to try to get this all done in a week and, uh, and, and get everything up and going uh, with our blackjack too here at uh, Beat the Casino. So until next time here, uh, we'll talk to you soon. Hope you're enjoying this. Thank you. Okay, Keith here, Beat the Casino. I, I wanted to uh, just kind of tweak the single deck basic strategy. And again, it's, we're just doing single deck. You probably won't get a chance to play the game unless you're in Vegas or some other places. But uh, it's a good place to start. And, it's, and, and it, because it's, it's only one deck, it's, it's easy to learn it. Uh, you've all seen this chart. You can get them anywhere on the internet um, uh, uh, for single deck. But anyway, this is one that I, I threw together. A couple tweaks... Uh, that are based upon the rules, uh, just I wanted to kind of point out to you. And, and, and quite honestly, if you make the mistake on them, it, it is very important to be accurate. But if you make the mistake, uh, hopefully it'll come out in your favor. But one of the things uh, with some of the splits um, 
and, and, and the casinos have changed the rules a little bit. If you can't double after you split, in other words, uh, in other words, let's say for instance, and I, I think you know what it means, but j just to be totally clear, if we have a, a pair of, uh, one of the rules is, is a pair of sixes against a two. So if we have a two sixes and, um, and the dealer has this, Okay, so if you're in a game and, and, and you're uh, confronted with this uh, situation, okay, you need to, to determine the play. Okay, the, the basic strategy rule uh, in this case, in single deck, mind you, is to split them. But it's contingent upon the fact that after you split them, you're able to double should, should it occur that you have a hand that you would want to double on. So, of course, there you wouldn't want to, okay, you just stand. Okay, so, so there's, there in, in that case you get a nine, that wouldn't be a, a double according to the basic, basic strategy chart. But if, let's say for instance, if in fact, um, I have a six, suppose that we actually hit this with a five, okay? Then of course you'd wanna go ahead and double that, that uh, 11 uh, against the two, okay? Now, if, if in fact they wouldn't allow you to double this hand, Okay, then what we're saying is instead of splitting them, just play it like normally a 12. And in this case, it would have worked out pretty good. You'd have got a 20, okay? So, so there's a couple instances of that where you have to pay attention to the rules where you don't want to split pairs unless you have the ability to double after. And if we look at them, I have them on the chart here. I put an asterisk uh, beside them. 6-6. Six, six. <clears throat> you're generally going to split if you can double after you can after you split. Uh, if you can't, then just simply hit them, hit them. Same with a pair of fours. The only time you want to split fours is if you can double after you can split. Otherwise, you're always just going to hit fours. Remember, I I kind of made a joke. I said, well, the easiest way to remember. When, when to split fours is just remember it's stupid to split fours. And it usually is because usually you can't double after you split in a single decade. Well, I, I should probably shouldn't say that. There are some places you can. Okay. Um, three, three. Okay. Again, uh, split them if you can double after, after you split them uh, against a two and a three. And the same with a pair of deuces. Uh, only split them if you can double after you, you split. Otherwise, just play them as a four. Okay. So that's the tweak for the basic strategy. Um, you know, here's a nice chart. Um, you can kind of look at it, you know, just, just remember some of the plays. Remember the 12 uh, you want to hit against a two or three. And, and when you're practicing, okay, not everyone plays straight basic strategy. So when you're counting the cards, go ahead and hit some things that are crazy and, and, and do some crazy stuff because everyone doesn't play uh, straight basic strategy. They play pretty close to it. Again, you know, make note of the A7 plays. You're going to double it three through six, stand against a deuce, stand against a seven, a eight. And the one everyone usually misses are, is, is, are these here, is the hits on the, on the soft 18 against a nine, 10, uh, and ace. And sometimes it, that changes in, in multiple decks. But this is the single deck game that we want you to play without counting. Okay. Okay. Now, what we're going to do next is we, we added one index to our play. And, and that was this. Any time to start off your first casino session, once you kind of got counting down, any time your count is positive, okay, and you are faced, um, let's see if I can get a 16 here. You are faced with a dealer 10. I want you, this is the way I want you to practice it. Let me just spread these out again. I'm sorry. <clears throat> okay, so if you have a 16, okay, and the dealer has a 10 up. Okay. You have a 16, and the dealer has a 10 up. If the count is negative, any side of negative, minus one, minus two, minus three, whatever, I want you to hit your 16. Because doesn't basic strategy said, any time you have a 16 against a 10, hit, okay? But 
we're going to put, that's going to be our first counting index. We're going to put it right there. If the count is zero or above, okay, we're going to stand. Okay. If the count is negative, which means there's less tens in the deck, we're going to hit against a 10. So that's the only play I want you to go ahead and change. Okay, one more thing when we're playing. If, if, you're, if you can play for, for, for just, and, and again, you know, you kind of got to invest something to learn, especially in the casino environment. So, you know, if you can go play for, you know, 100 bucks or 200 bucks uh, sometime, get yourself some nickels. Okay, like, there's $100 worth of nickels. Okay. If the count, okay, is, let, let's say zero or above, or uh, I'm sorry, above zero. So it, it's got to be plus one. Let, let's, let's leave it there. If it's plus one, let's say, for instance, the count is plus one. I want you to bet two chips, okay? And, and go ahead and play with two chips when, when the count is, is above, plus, is one, plus, anything above zero, plus one. Okay, it had, well, in single deck, it has to be plus one. Let's do it that way. Okay, 16. Break, okay. So you, you would have broke on that one. Ten, he couldn't win. <laughs> okay. If the count is negative, it, let's say, for instance, the count is minus one, minus two, minus three, we're just going to bet one chip. Okay? Okay. So that's basically how I want you to play the game, to start off. The first one or two times you go to the casino, you're going to count. You're going to put that one index on your 16. Okay? If it's minus one or below, you're going to hit your 16 against a 10. If it's zero or above, you're going to stand, okay? If the count is plus one or greater, you're going to bet two chips. If the count is zero or below, you're going to bet one chip, okay? That's how we're going to play. That's, that's our first project. That's how I want you to play your first couple games, okay? Okay, so next uh, we're going to get into um, you know some some multiple deck games with counting. We're going to go into the two deck game, okay, which is pretty similar, just a couple tweaks. We're going to go into the four deck game, and then I'm going to also kind of divert. I'll probably teach the traditional four deck game, but then come back around and 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 get into the zero proximity uh, way to play the four deck deck game, which is a real great way to play. And then, of course, six and eight decks, and we'll get strategies for those. And in the six and eight deck games, we're going to be getting into the, to the clumping strategy and how to play clump card blackjack and what to look for. Okay, great. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this little segment, and talk to you soon.